Episode 220, Mindful Homes, Interview with Angie Cho. Welcome to Episode 220 of the Holistic Spaces Podcast, where we hope to inspire, educate, and empower you to create your own holistic spaces that nurture and resonate with you. Angie Cho and Laura Morris are the founders of the Mindful Design Feng Shui School. We teach feng shui online at mindfuldesignschool.com. We teach an online certification program for feng shui practitioners, and we also have lots of different court mini courses and events. Be sure to sign up for our mailing list to learn about those. We also have an upcoming certification, so we hope some of you will join us. You can learn more about that by visiting mindfuldesignschool.com, joining our mailing list, and all those links are in our show notes. So... Today is the, uh, this podcast is going to launch the day before my book is released, my new book, Mindful Homes. So Laura Mm -hmm. insisted that she interview me about my book. (laughs) I did. I said, even though I've read it already, I said, I need to know more about this book from this Angie Cho person that I've heard a lot about. I need to interview her for all of our listeners And um, yeah, so I put together a few questions because I was like, oh, I've never interviewed someone about a book before. What do I ask? So I thought I would start by talking about, first of all, Angie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm 100% going to do that. So just, just talk a little bit about like what you do, like what, apart from doing this podcast, what else do you do? Okay. Well, uh, so I, I, along with Laura, of course, we host this podcast. We teach feng shui online. We teach feng shui practitioners. And I'm also an architect and a meditation practitioner. So um, so this book was something that I, it's my second book. And it was mm-hmm. kind of a more of a reflection of all of the things that I do in my life right now. And how they weave together. Mm -hmm. And so you would say, and how far apart is this book from the first book you wrote, which I believe is called Holistic Spaces? Yes. The first. The same name as this podcast. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I did that on purpose, actually. So I had the (laughs) book. Well, actually, I think I first had the business name, Holistic Spaces. And then we, oh, and then I wrote the book. I can't remember if the book came first or the podcast came first, but some of the listeners might know. I wrote the for my first book, Holistic Spaces, almost, uh, I think, nine years ago mm-hmm. or over not, around nine years ago or over nine years ago. So basically a decade. And I had been wanting to write a follow up book or a second book for a while. And I just finally sat down and did it last fall. And um. Wait, was there another question? Now I forgot. No, no. It, was, it was how long apart, I think I said, when did yes. you, like, what was the space between the two? And you mentioned a little bit about why this book is different from Holistic Spaces. What would you say the main difference would be? Um, I think the main difference would be that when I wrote Holistic Spaces, I had just only practiced feng shui for about a decade at that point. And I felt very confident in my expertise in order in, in the way that I could offer tips and guidance to people. Mm -hmm. And, and that's actually kind of when the world had just started the listicles. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to one of my good friends. I used to write for her blog in Habitat and we were talking about how the easiest blog posts to write and people, what people wanted to see was like a list of like nine ways to do this or five ways to do that. So um, my, it was very easy for me to start to have a more, to start writing with a very instructional tone, mm-hmm. which is still kind of my tone. I'm, people tell me I have a pretty down to earth and, and kind of instructive tone, at least I used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the first book, Holistic Spaces was more along those lines where I'm giving people advice and direction and it's, and there are 108 tips that can stand alone, but they can be uh, worked together. But this book is much different as I'm 
older now and my experience of feng shui has shifted and you and I started teaching. Mm -hmm. We'll have our five-year anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. or this, is, this year is this our five-year mm -hmm. anniversary. And, um, and the world has also changed dramatically in, since a decade ago. And so not only has the world sped up, we had a you know global pandemic and the focus and emphasis on our homes has shifted. So, so it's more of a, I think this new book is more of a reflection on my life as now that I look at feng shui as a more of a lifestyle, more than just a lifestyle, but also a pract a Dharma practice and how to really see feng shui as a means to understand and become friendly with yourself and to start to connect to your community as well as your home. Yeah, maybe less about fixing and doing a bunch of things, right? Yes, less about fixing and doing, more about understanding and having curiosity and and observing things because you don't have because you know the way that Laura and I teach you don't have to do anything to your home you don't have to make any changes simply starting to to observe things and notice things can create even a larger shift than moving furniture around or mm -hmm. they can be used in tandem yeah isn't that what the professor said that even when you give a client just by wording the the adjustment or talking about what the adjustment might be, you've already, not that you want to just leave it there, but potentially you can just, that's already doing work and it's part of this awareness and acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are some of the themes in your book? So some of the themes in the book, well, it goes over some of the basics, like what is chi? what is yin and yang, the the five elements and the Bagua area. But it's, but I tried to kind of set it up in such a way that it's, there's an unfolding to it. So you have like one thing, the chi, and then that breaks into two, mm -hmm. which is yin and yang. And then that further um, ex unfolds into the five elements, which then expands into the Bagua, the eight, mm -hmm the eight directions of the Bagua. And so I go over those. And then I also highlight the uh, some awareness practices, not just for your home, but for yourself, your inner environment, and include those as you move through the book. And then I start to look at the bedroom the kitchen and then the workspace and then the community so there so it kind of goes from from small and then it gets bigger and then it gets even bigger mm -hmm. right so so it starts to go from micro to macro mm -hmm. so yeah because you talk about the bedroom as being very uh i think you call it your heart you're connected mm -hmm. to your heart and then mm -hmm. The kin the kitchen is bigger. Kitchen. You know, you're nourishing yourself, but yes. almost like how you feed your whole body, as opposed, you know, your whole being. And then the workspace is your path in life, but also when you move out into the world, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then it goes out to the community too. Yeah. So, what? When you wrote that, okay, actually, I'm going to ask you this. The title, Mindful Homes, what does that mean to you when you do that? And I mean, you know, we use the word mindful for our school, so <laughs> I have some idea, but. Well, my original desired um, book name was Mindful Spaces, mm -hmm. but we ended up with Mindful Homes, which I think is much more, more is a little more specific, right? It's about mm -hmm. your home. So it really kind of encapsulates my understanding of, again, feng shui as a mindfulness practice, as a practice to understand um, yourself and a dharmic practice. So not just, it's not just about trying to move things around to fix yourself or to um, 
meet a partner or to make more money, it's actually starting to, it's, it's a practice to look at how your environment is connected to you. So, so when we can become more mindful of our homes and we start to pay attention to the details in our home around details that are in our home, whether that be some dust that's accumulating or the position of our bed or the colors that we have surrounding us or the or the meaning or like or the chi that's connected maybe predecessor chi that's connected to secondhand items all of those things affect our energy and our chi so how can we become more aware of that and then when we do it's amazing how we can begin to receive wisdom from our homes and there's so much that we're not that we don't see because we're not attending to it that we're kind of blind to as we just there's a lot of areas of our home and our lives that we don't acknowledge so so mindful homes really challenges the reader to look at your home as a way to meditate a way to get to know yourself better and a way to um, listen observe and see things in a different light and also acceptance as well of um, seeing maybe how one might have their own preconceived notions of what is a beautiful home, what what constitutes like a good life, and seeing how that compares to what is really present in your life and how you can find more ease and relaxation by accepting what is around you rather than trying to change it. So it's this like balance between um, noticing your home and being mindful and paying attention to the details and then using that information to create subtle shifts. That was very well said. Oh, was it? Okay. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I was like, what am I saying? No, it was good. It's like, it, it was just, I was like, how is she going to answer this one? I feel like we talk about this all the time, but you, you did a good job. Um, okay. Well, Cause not a lot of people look at feng shui as a mindfulness practice. Yeah. I think they think they do, but I, well, I think, hmm, I think it's sometimes thrown around that word, but I don't think people really think about what that means. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's kind of a, a hot word right now. Right. But when you really do think about it, 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 there's a reason like, besides just saying it, there's, you know, there really is about it being a way to connect on a much deeper level and because, and it can be used in so many different practices. So I really like the way you connect it back to feng shui. Okay. I'm going to ask you. What was your favorite part of this book to write? Um, I actually really enjoyed writing the not the last part, the last parts of my book. The last thing I wrote was the uh, introduction, which is funny, right? Because you know, after you write the book, then you can introduce someone to it. So I think the introduction and the acknowledgments were my favorite because I think I had kind of gotten over the hurdle of writing the book and so then the acknowledgments are when you thank people that have supported you and it was very emotional for me to write it and I wrote it when I was on retreat in France so but it, it I felt like it just really came together so it, it's a favorite because it was very enjoyable and I was and I was in retreat and I had, um, and I was on this beautiful land in France, in the country, surrounded by oak trees on a, I was, um, and staying in a chateau. And then um, the last part that I wrote was the introduction, which was also very meaningful to me because I could introduce people to the book, but also look back at what I had written and, and I write in that introduction how a lot of that, what, like what we're talking about now, like where I was when I wrote my first, first book and, and what you can mm -hmm. expect from this book. Okay. Can I tell you what my favorite part of the book is? Yes. And then can you, can you, ex can you maybe walk listeners through it as kind of a sample? Okay. Yes. So I really enjoyed the part where you talked about 
awakening the deity of your bed. Oh, you I did? thought, yeah, deity, okay. deity, deity, deity um, of your bed. Can you, because I just thought it was such a beautiful way of, of thinking about, um, about your bed, about, you know, the energy in your bed. Can you talk a little bit about what that, like what that entails and what that was? Yes. Yeah, so that's in the chapter that's about the bedroom where I, I named the chapter, meet your heart, the bedroom. And I review your bedroom as a symbol for you, how to activate the Bagua on your bed. And then there's a ritual. So there's there's some, there like the book is structured. So there's sometimes a ritual that accompanies something. And so the ritual to awaken the deity of your bed is, is really, I think, a different way of looking at things. Because sometimes we really take our home for granted or things in our home. Like, uh, so, you know, our bed is always there for us. It's always supporting us. It's there when we're sick. It doesn't ask us for anything in return. And it's um, also a living being. And in feng shui, we believe that everything is alive. We believe that everything is alive. So... Um, so this is a visualization that you can do to acknowledge that your bed is alive. And so there's a walkthrough and I, and with these, with these rituals, I have them written out step-by-step, step, but I also have audio and video versions, um, available for the readers. And there's a link in the book. And so it just, uh, it just, ha it's just an exercise to allow the reader to connect with the bed by first allowing, you know, first relaxing and then allowing your body to relax and then allowing the bed to hold you and then acknowledging all the support your bed offers you. And then there's a visualization where you see a ball of white light from your heart center and that it expands out and it begins to, um, it comes from from the sun and the moon, but it goes into your heart center and then it expands out, filling your entire torso, your entire body. And then it begins to um, also encompass your bed. And then you offer that light to the deity of your bed. And so you give a gift in order to acknowledge your bed and connect you to the bed. I like that. I love my bed so much that sometimes when I like, you know, when you go away and then you come back and you're like, oh, I'm yeah. like, I get into my bed and we have great linen sheets. Like I love my bed so much. Sometimes my husband would be lying there and I say, no offense to you, but if I could marry my bed, I would 100% marry my bed. Like I love my bed so much. It gets just, ugh. anyway, so that just, it was like, I already did it, but now like I'm 100% going to do that um, meditation that you have, which I thought was really lovely. And I just, I like that idea where you're bringing in the concept of, of honoring individual parts of your home in that way that there are, it's, it's a, you know, a particular practice. And, and I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a really good one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I feel like, I don't know. Do you, do you have anything else you wanted to share about the book? Um, well, I guess I could just share a little bit that, um, the book is an approach to feng shui as we've talked about. Can you about show it. the book for the oh, yeah. video? Cause you know, on YouTube, mm -hmm. we have all our little videos show the pretty cover. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So mindful homes is, was written because I felt it was very important to, redefine feng shui the way that I've been practicing it now these two decades that feng shui is really a mindfulness practice and it's a, an awareness practice and like meditation it offers you an invitation to connect with yourself become more friendly with yourself and your home 
and that your home can be a tool to start to see um see things in a more in a more enlightened way and that there is a lot of wisdom in one's home mm -hmm. so i think that it's also very timely because i believe that people now are much more connected to their homes and recognize the importance of their home and also mindfulness and meditation mm -hmm. is also becoming more of a household term so so really that i felt like collectively the world needs this right now and and very it's just pretty book and it's, and that too mm -hmm. yeah it's very and, pretty. no it's like it's very lovely like it feels like that like it feels like a gift and um it feels like a a little a, a meditation and like a jewel like you open it and and the pictures are all so beautiful and and you're right it's like an unfolding it's not like okay you know this is it's not instruction it's not instructional like a like a 101 feng shui book it's it's an unfolding i really thought it was lovely so really yeah thank you and i couldn't have done it without laura mm -hmm. And even at the 11th hour when I was going to like have a meltdown because they wanted me to edit the or re reread and go through one more time, a final pass with everything, Laura, I was like going to have a meltdown and Laura stepped up and she stepped up and she worked on it over the weekend and she, she proofed it one last time. You did the mm -hmm. last proof. Mm -hmm. And, um, and now we have this book that's, that's very pretty that's coming out mm -hmm. in April, April 11th, the day, the day after this podcast launches and all of you can get it wherever books are sold called mindful homes. Lovely. Thank you. Well, thank Thanks, you, Laura. Angie, for being here. And now if you wouldn't mind, please closing this podcast, <laughs> what you always do. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Laura. And thank you so much listeners for following our podcast, for listening to us and you know, you can listen and tune in every week for a new episode. If you like our podcast, please share it with others, subscribe, leave a review. You can always support us by checking out our certification and mini courses at mindfuldesignschool.com. You can also sign up for our mailing list there or look in the show notes. And you can always explore the world of holistic spaces and feng shui on an even deeper level by visiting our website, holisticspaces.com or mindfuldesignschool.com. So thank you so much for listening and we will see you next week.